I wanted to share how I'm currently testing my GraphQL resolvers. So I'm using Jest as my test runner, and then I'm also using TypeScript on my server. So I use TS Jest. And to set it up in a project, I just follow the getting started here and run these four commands. And then in my project, I just add a scripts where I call a Jest, and I just usually map that to the test. Now the project I'm looking at right here is my Stripe example, which I'll link below if you want to see the code for this. Uh, but basically I want to test my resolvers for this. And the resolvers that I tested for this are register, login, and this me query. So real quickly, just to show you what they do is register encrypts or uh, hashes a password. So it takes an email and password as arguments, hashes the password, then creates a user. Now this user.create is using typeform and it's saving it to a PostgreSQL database. Login, we're grabbing an email password as arguments. We're seeing if we can find a user um, and then we can compare the passwords. And if that's all good, we return a user. Um, and then lastly up here for the me, we currently check uh, the session. So we have, I'm using, uh, express sessions for this and it'll give me the session of the current user and I'm storing the user ID and you can see at the bottom of my login I set the user ID there um, and then I just fetch a user based on that. So that's what I'm testing and here's how I test them. So really what I want to do is I want to call the three or the two mutations in a query. So here you can see I have one mutation, two mutation, and then the query itself. And these are actually equivalent to what I would do if I was in my React application or my front end and I actually wanted to query or call the mutation. So you'll see I actually pass in, uh, or I have the variables there to actually call it as well. And then to start my test, I actually want to use uh, type orm, and that's the orm that I'm using to make requests to Postgres. And uh, I basically want to use it in my tests. So here I'm creating a connection and I use a special one, which I call create test connection, uh, which I'll show you in a second. And then after the test is ended, I just close the connection. And now I'm just importing this uh, from over here and I create a create test connection. And basically the special thing about this is I test on a separate database. So I just call it Stripe example test and then drop schema I set to true. That way it drops the schema every time it creates a connection, therefore dropping the schema. Now for this test, I should probably be running this in like a global setup, at least to drop the schema, but this will work for now. Uh, and then this is what my actual test looks like. So here, the first thing I start off with in this, I have a single test that I wrote here that tests the registry login and resolvers all kind of in sync um, or one after the other. And so here I am testing the register resolver first or the register mutation. So what I do is I create a user or I basically have some data I wanna create a user on. And then I use this thing called GraphQL test call, which I'm gonna show you. And so what I pass to that is the mutation and then the variables to that. So basically this is how I'm calling the mutation. So let's take a look at this. This is something that I actually just created. So this is a function I created. And what I do is I use the GraphQL function from the GraphQL package. So what I do is I uh, create the schema for my uh, resolvers and the type defs. And again, it doesn't matter how you actually create your schema. If the schema is uh, split up and you're merging the schema, that's totally fine. All you want to do is take your end schema and pass it to this GraphQL function. So basically what we can do is we can pass it our schema the query we want to run, which I take that as a variable. Uh, I forget what this third parameter is, but I just have it as undefined, so I'm not using it. And then this third one, um, this is the context. So if we come over here to my server, um, I can see the context. I pass in a request object and a response object to my context. So in my test over here, I am passing those in as well, and then I'm just mocking some stuff. So I'm using clear cookie and the logout. So I wanted to just put a function here and then I'm using the session.user ID. And so this is something I can actually just pass in when I call this. That way I can set the current user that I want to test the resolver on. Uh, and this just makes it easy. So whatever user I want to test for a specific, specific resolver, I just pass in as a parameter there. And then lastly, pass in the variables. 
So what I pass to this query test call is I can pass in a query, or again, this can be a mutation, but this is just the string um, that has that data in it, uh, possibly some variables and possibly a user ID as well. Uh, so that's what's going on over here. And then that just calls, it just, and here, if I, I don't know if I showed that part, yeah, but it just, here's, I'm importing my resolvers, importing my type defs. So it takes my schema over here, it takes my resolvers over here, uh, and then we're just gonna call uh, mutations on that. And again, these, I have all my resolvers in one place, but you can also merge them together if you want to. And same with your type defs. Um, all right, so the resolvers over here, Again, so from there, I'm pretty much just calling it and then equating some values are true or that I expect some things. So for example, here's what I expect to come back from this response. And by the way, this is asynchronous. So uh, I'm using asynchronous function and I'm awaiting the response. And here uh, in my particular type defs, I just set, uh, here's the register. So it expects these two variables. And then I say true or false whether the register was successful or not. So here I just say expect and I expect this to have be returned. I get a data on the outer layer. That's just what you expect from a GraphQL response. And then in there we have a register mutation and it should be true. And then after that, to just verify and actually create a, a user in the database, here I'm calling user.find1 and I'm looking it up based off the email that we specified up here. And then I now have, this is the user I should be getting back from the database and I'm just making sure that it is defined. Then after that, here's how I'm testing the login. Uh, again, I'm just using the GraphQL test call, passing in the login mutation, which again is just that string up here. And then we're passing in our email and password, and then we get a response from that. And then here, here's the user that I expect to get back, the user data I get back from the login. It should be successful. And here I'm just comparing it against the data I expect, which is in the database. So here I'm saying that. And then a few things I'm doing here is the database user can be a user or undefined. So I'm just casting it here. This is kind of a type TypeScript thing. Um, and then here I'm just casting this to a, well not casting it, but I have a string template here because the ID comes back as a string uh, from GraphQL. Uh, and then lastly, here's an example of changing the context. So I wanna make sure the me query works. So here I pass in uh, the me query, and then I don't need to pass in these two variables. I'm not sure why I had those. Um, copy paste probably. And then, uh, so the variables is just gonna be an empty object. And then the last value is gonna be the user that I wanna use for this resolver, or the user ID I wanna pass in. In this case, I wanna pass in this DB user here. And then we're just gonna wait from the me response, and then we're gonna just make sure we get the correct user, all right? Um, and then, yeah, so this is the same thing that I was doing right there is just make sure the user, and that's pretty much how I'm currently doing testing right now. Um, and then I put all these into a single test, um, but you probably in practice want to break this up into multiple, um, or, you know, you can, you can put them together like this. It's kind of succinct, um, and you can test them one after the other. Um, which I kind of like doing. Otherwise, I would have to like fetch a user from the database. But I mean, in a lot of my code, I have them split up too. So it's debatable. Um, the other thing is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually making requests to the database. So the other thing I've seen people do sometimes is to actually mock the database requests themselves. I haven't really been doing that kind of for two reasons. One, um, I kind of like to know whether my database calls are working correctly and making sure I'm getting the correct response from the ORM and making sure like type ORM is working correctly. And two, um, well, two, it's kind of a mix where like, I'm not sure if it'll be more work to be mocking the database values back or not. It's probably about equal work. So I don't think that's really a fair argument. Um, but I will say that, uh, it is probably a slower this way, making all these requests to the database. So mocking it would be a lot faster. So you're gonna get slower tests this way. So it's, you know, it's something you have to kind of, uh, it's a trade off, uh, but I'm always trying to kind of improve the way I'm testing stuff. So I'm curious what you guys think of this method. Um, if you have better ways, I would love to hear them and love to improve the way I'm doing stuff. Um, one thing I recently just saw is Apollo server just came out with a new Apollo server testing. So that's kind of interesting. Haven't tried it out yet, but that could be something that I replace um, my current test testing with. So instead of using this GraphQL test call, 
um, I could possibly use this uh, and basically create a client and then you can use the query mutation. Now I'm not sure if I'll actually move over to this, haven't really tried it out yet. And two, I'm um, just from like looking at it, seems easier to kind of manipulate the context um, through using this just GraphQL call. But with that said, maybe manipulating the context is kind of an anti-pattern, so hard to say. Anyway, I'm curious what you guys' thoughts are on this, and all this code is up on GitHub, and I'll share the link below if you want to uh, test it out.